All right, hello everyone. Welcome back to Data Programming 1. I don't really have any big announcements for today. We just wrapped up midterm two and we're now gonna be moving into the third section of the course. All right, so let's get started. Uh, go to our webpage, download the, under the code section, there's a Jupyter Notebook template. We're gonna be spending the entire time today in that notebook. Uh, the slide that's up on the screen right now is the only slide for this lecture in a PowerPoint format. Everything else is just gonna be Jupyter. All right, but I do want to start off with a little bit of like review where we are in the course. So the first five weeks of the course were all about control flow. We learned that statements are executed sequentially, one after the other, each line executed only once. We talked about uh, conditional statements that let us jump over blocks of code. We talked about iteration that lets us repeat code. And we talked about functions, which lets us pull out pieces of code that we can like jump to and then jump back from that, you know, serve a, a purpose. Then in the next five weeks, the middle part of the course, the part we just wrapped up, we talked a lot about data structures. We focused on lists and dictionaries and then some other variations on those. And with those um, lists and dictionaries, we can pretty much do anything uh, we want to with Python. Now, moving into this third section of the course, this is really gonna be focused on the data programming and the data science side of things. Uh, so even though the exam is done, um, all of that stuff that we've learned during the first 10 weeks of the course, these next pieces use that material. In general, the topics we're covering don't build on each other. Uh, obviously, we've got Pandas 1 and then Pandas 2, but that's really going to be largely independent from Databases 1 and Databases 2 and Web 1 and Web 2 and Web 3. They're, they're independent. They don't, you know, really like, you're not required to understand Pandas to understand the web material, but you will need everything from the first 10 weeks for each of these topics. So even though the exam is done, make sure you put in the time to make sure that you retain that information. Don't forget it. And also any introductory CS course that you take is gonna go over all of those same topics. It's really only this last third is that's uh, of the course that's gonna be deviating from what you'd see in a more traditional computer science introduction. Um, so if you go ahead and like continue with computer science and take one of those other courses, knowledge of these topics, even if you're switching to C++ or to Java, is going to carry over. A lot of what we're going to be looking at during the next five weeks is things that we already know how to do in Python, um, but easier ways to do them using these, uh, you know, packages like pandas or databases or something like that. Just easier ways to, to accomplish the same task. So today's topic is a module called pandas. Uh, the accent is actually on the second day, so it's not pandas like the panda bear, pandas. Um, but I'm going to pronounce it wrong the whole time. Forgive me. It's just, uh, it's in my notes. I'm reading it. it. It looks like it should be the bear name. Uh, in fact, that's actually where it was named for. All right. Anyway, pandas is a tool for working with tabular data, to, uh, like tables, just like we get with a spreadsheet like Excel. That's what I have open here. Um, but it's going to be maybe a better way to work with this data. Uh, so far in Python, we've been using lists of lists to talk about tabular data. We've been importing from CSVs, um, and that, that's great, but it's, it can be a little cumbersome. And Pandas provides us with a lot of tools to work with tabular data that's a, a big step up from lists of lists. And in fact, um, so here I've got Excel open. I just wanted to like point out a couple of uh, features of Excel that we'd love to retain and build on. First, Excel is a, it, it really, it's a programming language. Uh, and, but what we've got here is tabular data and all of the cells here are also the code. So just check this out, for example. Suppose I have a number here in cell C5, we'll go with five. And then in D5, I've got another number, seven. Okay, those are just like variables. They hold a number. And then if I have some code, for example, over here in F5, I can write some code. I can say this is C5 five times D five and just get those two cells. It's color coded them for me. Push enter. It's going to do that computation. And now uh, if I wanted to, I could actually make this a little more meaningful instead of having like a variable name, like, you know, C five, that doesn't really tell me very much. I could name it length and just put this in a table. Here we go width and then area. But now what I'm doing is I'm taking cells, which are themselves variables, and using them to remind myself what these other variables stand for. And if I actually want to see the code and check it out and decide if I've made a mistake or not, I have to click on all of these cells to figure out what's going on. Oh, look, here's some code. 
So Excel is very powerful. I'm a, I'm a huge fan. I really love Excel. I use it all the time for many different things. But what I hope you guys will find by the end of the semester, after you've got some experience with this, is that Pandas provides potentially a better way to work with this kind of data. Because we can do this in Jupyter Notebook, we can put it the code in, we can actually see all of the code. Then we can have it print out the results as a table, and then we can go back, add more code, and just walk through the development of how we solve a particular problem. All right, so I've jumped back over. I've pulled up the uh, Jupyter Notebook template for this lecture. Up here in cell one, I've just got some formatting commands that make this wider. I didn't actually execute this yet. Um, and then this first cell here is just markup. That's got some important information about pandas that, uh, you know, this is what, what I would put on a PowerPoint slide, but it's here instead because I want everything to all be in one place and kind of keep this streamlined for you guys as you take notes. And if I say something, you can actually go in to my slide right here and add to it as you're going through the lecture and taking notes. All right, so first up, pandas is uh, it's going to introduce two uh, brand new data types. Uh, well, here, it's for working with tabular data, and it's a... Uh, uh, um, an alternative to Excel. Ooh, that should have been capitalized. Get it next year. Okay, so uh, Pandas is going to introduce two new data types. The first is called a series. They're they're really cool. It's basically a hybrid between a Python dictionary and a Python list. So as you can imagine, because it's a hybrid of dictionary and list, it's it's basically it's going to have keys and indices at the same time, just like uh, di dictionaries have keys and lists have indices. Um, but what we're going to find is that they've renamed them. And the, the, the only thing that's really hard about this is the really horrible vocabulary they've chosen to name things. So I'm going to do my best to like use the right word and then mention what the equivalent is for a Python dictionary or whatever, or list. So um, in pandas, uh, pandas index would be the same thing as a dictionary key. And in Pandas, well, we're also going to see that we get both the dictionary key and we get a list index because it's this hybrid data structure. So the index from like a Python list in Pandas is actually known as the integer position. So we just have, we have two things, two ways we can look up information. We have the index and we have the integer position. And again, the index is just like a dictionary key and the integer position is what we would call index from a list. So we're using index twice in different ways. Uh, it's going to be confusing. I'm going to try and do my absolute best to use the exact right vocabulary and at the same time mention the Python equivalent as we go through this. And I think, you know, it would be great if I could just rename all of the vocabulary to something that really makes sense. But Pandas has been out there for a long time and a lot of people are familiar with it and they're going to be using the correct language. If you get a job where they require you to use Pandas, they expect you to use the right words when you're talking about it. So I'm going to stick with the vocabulary that's a little more confusing because it's important that you guys learn it. All right. So now just some of the like an overview of some of the features that we're going to cover today when we talk about series. Uh, first, the Panda series support this really super powerful information looking up technique, uh, not just like, you know, when we have a list, we could slice it and extract pieces of it, but it supports really complicated expressions within the like slicing style lookup mechanism. So when we extract information, we're going to use the brackets, uh, square brackets to look things up. We can actually put equations in there, expressions um, that resolve to something and use that to like sort out our data and get exactly what we want. Uh, it also supports uh, element wise operation. This is going to be really great for the, those of you guys who are math people who are familiar with vector math. Uh, and this is also great for people who really hate writing loops because element-wise operation gives us ways to do something to every single piece of data in a series all at the same time. Um, and I'll do some demonstrations of that. It, it's a lot like vector math, very different from what we see with lists. All right, and then finally, uh, Boolean indexing is a, perhaps a more powerful technique that lets us create a brand new list that contains only items that meet uh, certain conditions. So with a list or dictionary, we would use brackets for index and slicing. With series, we can uh, extract the exact values we want with complicated rules using very short, readable code 
that makes it easy to see what's going on, as opposed to try and read a loop and figure out what's, what's really happening. And then next lecture, because we're looking at tabular data, series is just like a list or a dictionary hybrid. Uh, we'll actually be getting to the table part of things. And a table in uh, Pandas is known as a data frame. Uh, it's just, it's built from a series. Essentially, each column of the table is a series. And we'll be getting to that next lecture. Because Pandas is not a built-in module in Python, we're going to have to go ahead and install it. Uh, so go to the terminal or PowerShell and go ahead and enter pip install pandas at the uh, prompt. And it'll go ahead and install that for you. This is not one of those four packages that we installed during week one of the course. So you, uh, you have to go ahead and do it now if you've not already done it. Um, I had not done it on this particular computer, so I just pulled up PowerShell, typed in pip install pandas. It took about 30 seconds. Um, so hopefully now I've dragged on long enough rambling that if you guys haven't done it yet, you've pulled up PowerShell and it's already underway, or, or Terminal, and it's already underway. All right, once we've got it installed, what we can do is go ahead and bring it into Jupyter Notebook with import pandas. I'm just going to do control enter to run that, and now I've got pandas available. So I can go ahead and uh, create um, these data objects, um, data structures, from pandas, like a series. And we'll run that cell. So here we can see it's working. Uh, I needed to type both the name in the module pandas and the data here, uh, data type series. And now I can verify that it's working. It can be a lot of work to type pandas every single time, pandas.series, every single time I want to make a brand new series. So oftentimes what people will do is they'll abbreviate it. Um, and to do that, we just import pandas. And then we can use that uh, keyword as and the abbreviation that is most common is PD. So once I have that, and, and you'll see this on Stack Overflow, anywhere you go to get help. In fact, a lot of times people will not even show this line as part of the demonstration code. They'll just be using things like PD.series and assume that you know that it's coming from Pandas. And that's what that means. All right, and again, you can see this is now working. It's giving us the exact same information about the series as when we use the full name of the module. It's just an abbreviation. Now that we've got uh, pandas imported, let's go ahead and make a series uh, from a dictionary as our next example. All right, so first up, a uh, quick review, we'll create a dictionary. So we'll just say D is equal to, I'm gonna use the curly braces. This will give me an empty dictionary. Now what I'm gonna do is create uh, key value pairs and we'll go ahead and put three of them in. My keys are going to be strings, and my values will be numbers. So I'm going to just go ahead and write some strings. One, two, three. All right, and then for the values, uh, we'll go with seven. Got an extra space there. Eight and nine. That should match what Mina's doing. That's the plan. All right, let's go ahead and just print this out. We'll run this cell, make sure I didn't make any mistakes. And here we go. This is a Python dictionary. All right, we can do something very similar with the pandas series. So we'll just call it s for series equals pd dot series. Note that series is capitalized. Uh, this is a constructor for a series, so it's going to get, it's basically a function, so we're going to be giving it parentheses. And now I'm just going to put this exact same dictionary right here inside those parentheses. So this will be my um, initialization values. All right. Uh, let's go ahead and put S there so it, uh, Jupyter Notebook will print out the contents. We'll run this cell. I'm adjust the screen a little bit. And now we can see that uh, we're still getting the same kind of looking thing. I've got my keys over here on the left. I've got my values here on the right. Um, so Python is going to print out their dictionaries by default as a like horizontal row. Pandas is going to make it look a little more like a nice table. A um, couple of things. I should also point out here, so this last item, the D type, stands for data type, okay, and the data type here is int64. So uh, a lot of programming languages out there will limit how big uh, of an integer you can use. Uh, 2 billion is a really common uh, limitation. Um, Python is one of the few languages that does not put a restriction on how large integers can be. You can have an integer of any size with Python. but 
what's going on inside of pandas is that it's going to be switching to a different programming language that's going to be a little faster more optimized than python to do things very quickly and so it's telling us that we've switched all these numbers to use uh, integers with 64 bits which is great i've got a 64-bit computer uh, that should still happen very quickly um, without having to worry about any loss of uh, screen keeps flickering weird apologize if that's bugging anybody um, anyway so it's just telling us that inside of pandas we've switched to this other type of data um, to store these numbers they're not being stored as python integers they're being stored as c integers with 64 bits all right so let's take a little more closer look so i mentioned that we have both the index which is the same as a dictionary key so this is my pandas index those uh, one two three I also have an integer position, um, and that's hidden. It doesn't display those integer positions here when I'm looking at the data table, but this first row uh, of the series is going to be integer position 0. Uh, the next row, the 2 and 8, would be integer position 1. Uh, the 3 and 9, that's going to be at integer position 2. Um, but it doesn't show us that when we just display the series. It's going to just, uh, just print the keys. So let me just uh, take a second and write down some notes here. So integer position, index, and value. Just make a little chart here. So at integer position, go 0, we have index 1, and the value here is whoops, 7. And another comment, integer position 1, we have 2 with a value of 8. And at integer position 2, we have 3. Let me make that line up good and 9. And then that last row we have dtype into 64. And again, that's just reminding us that it's actually being stored as a C variable, a C data type, um, that's using 64 bits to store the integer. And that's going to limit the maximum size of the number that we can store there. All right, now because series have both uh, an index and an integer position, we can use either one of those to get access to our data. I've got my little chart here. so. Um, let's quick review when we have a dictionary a Python dictionary to access something we're just going to use the square brackets to access the uh, data and I just need to give it uh, the key so extracting um, uh, entry with entry one um, that's deceptive and the entry with the key one it's going to just return seven the value that's stored there all right we can do something very similar with the panda series except we're going to need the, a command uh, loc for location and now I'm going to give it the same in this case index so index is the word we're using for a series it's the equivalent to a key in dictionary um, so that's great we we're just able to look up the value with key or I'm sorry with index 1 give us the value 7 we can do the same thing here uh, with 2 that's going to go ahead and look up index 2 and return 8 when I run it. There we go. All right. We can also access values using their integer position. So quick review. Here's my table. These were the index, in, indices. And the integer position are just going to start at 0 and um, increase uh, 0, 1, 2, 3 uh, for all of the uh, elements in the series. So just, um, and to use the integer position, the command there is going to be i location or i lock. So let's do a quick demo. Uh, i lock will grab element 0, execute that, it's uh, 7. So here, again, row 0, uh, or entry 0 in the series, gives us the value 7. All right, uh, check this out. Uh, location 1, run that, we get the 8. Up here in the data table, or in the series, integer position 1 has the value 8. We can also do uh, negative indexing, just like we could with a, um, a Python list. So we can do minus 1, we'll run that cell real quick, find out that it's 9. And of course, the last item would be the negative 1. So that would be that row right there. We get the 9. Um, and with default, there's also a shortcut we can do. I can completely leave out the I lock or the lock, and Pandas will do its absolute best to figure out which one we really mean. So in this case, I'm going to use the um, 
index and run this code, it's going to go ahead and just, without me telling it I'm using the index by the location command, um, it figures out that this is a location, uh, um, um, an index. Okay, same thing if it's unambiguous, I can also go and grab, oops, not 90, um, integer position 0 using this sort of data. So, but I, and I didn't need to put in the I lock right there because Pandas was able to figure it out. So it does it absolute best to figure things out without us having the, to worry about um, specifying exactly which type of indexing we're using. I'm going to mention right here before I move on to that if there is any ambiguity and that's going to happen if I use an integer as one of my index values. So instead of like the text one, two, and three, if I actually use a number here, anytime I use a number, then there's ambiguity between, well, gosh, am I trying to look this up by index or by integer position? Python will assume, or Pandas will assume, that we're using an index. So if I use a like a, an integer two or something in this list, it's by default gonna grab the, the two from the index row, not the two from the integer position row. So if we want, um, it's great to be very clear about which type of indexing we're using so that we don't run into any sort of trouble there. All right, with lists, um, we were able to access multiple values and create a new list by um, slicing the list. Pandas gives us something even more powerful. We can still create slices, but check this out. If I have, um, now let me just quick review. So my list S has this data in it. But one of the things I can do is I can just index into the list and inside these brackets, I'm gonna give it another list and I'm gonna grab element zero and element two. Okay, so that's gonna return seven and nine when I run this. There we go, seven and, in fact, let me do this real quick, print s, when we run the cell, then we can see the list. We're creating a brand new list and it's grabbing uh, integer positions zero and two, so just the seven and the nine, and it's returning a brand new uh, pandas series when I do something like this, right there. I think that looks pretty good. All right, uh, I've got another option too. Let me go ahead and just do this. We can also index by putting in a list of indexes. Yeah, so here we'll go, we'll grab one and two. This is gonna create a brand new pandas series with rows one and two, so just the seven and eight there. Um, indexing by with a list of options. So up here we were indexing with just one key or one integer position. We can actually give it a list and pull out multiple values uh, without, uh, like, if we were to do this with a list and slicing, we would uh, be getting a contiguous block of uh, elements from the list. We weren't able to, like, leave holes in them. And to pull the, something like this off, to do this with a Python list structure, we'd need a loop that goes through everything. We'd create a new list, an empty list, and then fill it in with new values for the things that we wanted to add to the list um, until we actually created a new data structure here. We're doing it in one, just uh, essentially data structure lookup. We're also able to create pandas series uh, from lists. So quick review, if we have just a list of numbers and suppose for example, we put in, there's my empty list. I'm gonna add some numbers to it, 100, 200, 300. I'll, let me quick, I'll run this cell and then we'll do num list just to see what this looks like in Python. So there's my Python list. Next step after that, we'll create a pandas series from that. So I'm gonna do pd.series. And then in the parentheses, I'm gonna just pass in this list. Um, and I'm just gonna copy and paste the actual code, the, the numbers right here, so it's pretty clear what's going on. All right, and then we'll go ahead and print that out. And let me throw in, um, we'll print this one out. And we'll just let Jupyter Notebook take care of printing that. So now. Here we go, I've got my Python version of the list and then the pandas series that's been created from the same data as in that list. So here we can see that what it's got here, these are the indexes, um, not the integer positions. The integer positions, they don't tell us what they are. They're hidden. Um, we can just see by what row they're in. But these are the indexes. That's the same as like the dictionary key. 
Uh, so, and what it's doing is it's taking the index from the list. So this is at position zero, this is at position one, and just using those indexes as the series index also. So this is one of those examples where if I'm indexing um, without telling it whether it's the index or integer position, and there could be some ambiguity here um, because I'm using actual integers as my index values. All right, I just want to be really clear here. Let me go ahead and grab this text right here and just do the same thing for this list. Just write out what we really got. So here we don't have an index, whoops, that's zero, uh, with text. They're going to be zero, one, and two. Move that over. And then the values here, we have 100, 200, and 300. And the reason that I paused and wanted to go back and copy this is I want to be very clear that there's an integer position and an index. This index comes from the uh, indexing into the Python list that we used when we created this. And the integer position is just happens to be which um, element in the Python series they are. Um, they happen to be the same values, but they're actually different, even though they have the same values. One is an integer position, one is an index. And I can use either one of those to access the data in the table. So if I have as location of one, that's going to give me the 200. I can also do s integer position. Oops, lost a character there. On that one, also, here, oh, let me do this. Print. We'll go ahead and just print out both of these. So they're both there. And we can see that we're getting the same data, the 200 out, whether I'm accessing with in this case, the top one here is the index, and the bottom one is the integer position, like that. Just thought of one more thing that I want to add. Um, while I'm comparing uh, the location and I location, or index and integer position, up above I mentioned that it's possible to use the negative indexing, like I, I, my example was index position minus one. I did that with I location. And then I talked a little bit, like the next thing I talked about was how I can leave out these location and I location and just use brackets and Pandas is smart enough to figure it out. That's not true with negative indexing. So right here, I've got this data structure is this series. So as here, let me just print it out so we can see what it looks like in, like on the screen. If I go ahead and try and use a negative index, uh, this is going to give me an error. It's not going to go ahead and find the last thing. Minus one is not in range. It, it can't. It's just not smart enough to work with the negative indexing, unless I go ahead and use the i location. So I have to be very specific when I'm using negative indexing. So here, oh, let me go ahead and say. Let me think of a good comment. I'll type it up and then I'll be right back. Now yeah, here we go. All right, avoid negative indices unless you are specifically using i lock. Actually, that sounds better than what I wrote here. There we go. Um, it won't work if you don't have that. You know, if you just use the default, let pandas figure it out, whether I'm an index or an integer position, it's going to fail. So at this point, um, we've talked about creating pandas series from dictionaries. We've talked about creating pandas series from lists. We've talked about grabbing values from those data structures with the indexing. And we had two different kinds of indexing um, using the index and with the integer position. And we have also talked about grabbing data, like more than one piece of data at a time, using a list of indices. Uh, at this point, I strongly recommend that you guys just pause the video and go try some of these on your own. Create your own list of data and then try and access some of these things just so you get some experience. Uh, use the information in your brain. You'll remember it better. And then come back. All right, next up, um, I want to talk a little bit about slicing. We're going to quick review how slicing works with lists and then talk about the subtle differences between uh, slicing with a list and slicing with a series. So if we have a letter list, and I'm just going to make a quick list. There, it's empty. I'm going to put some letters in there. So there we go. We've got the, all the syntax. And we'll just put in A, B, C, and D. OK, I'll run that. Print it out. There we go. Now we have a Python list with those things. I uh, will go ahead also, I'm just going to do this right up at the top of this demo uh, section right here. 
we'll do letters as a series and that's going to be pd dot series letter list uh, and then we'll print that one out and there we go so we can see the again the, the panda series is going to print this vertically it's going to go ahead and use the indexes for this exactly as the indexes from the list there are also hint hidden integer positions that it's not showing us okay so quick review if i want to um slice the python list so i'm looking up here at this one from cell 33 to slice something like that if we could just do letter list and then let's see let's grab elements two to the end so that's going to start with zero one two it's going to start with the c and go all the way to the end let me just do that there we go we get c and d uh, let's capture this in a variable we'll have sliced letter list equal to that and then we'll go ahead and print this out just to, so we can see it so everything is on the screen okay we're seeing that we get the c and the d then uh if i want to i can go ahead and index into this list um, this is going to be at position zero this is at position one it is a python list nothing has changed since the first 10 weeks of the semester so uh, i can just go ahead and grab element zero for example that should be position zero and i should get the c all right very good so very straightforward quick review that's how it works in python um, now let's go take a look at what's going on in pandas so we have a series and we take a slice like saying quick review my pandas data series uh, looks like this it's got a b c and d uh, i can slice it doing the exact same thing more or less so i have sliced letters equal and then letters is the name of the the panda series right there so, uh, letters and we'll go ahead and grab two to to the end um, and this is going to be using the keys by default. I'm sorry, the index, which is like a dictionary key. It's these guys right here, the index indices. So it's going to start with two. It's going to grab three and continue on. So let me go ahead. We'll grab that slice. Make sure all the variables are the same names. Yep, and we'll just print it out. All right, so we can see um we've got the c and the d the values are great we we'll grabbed the correct rows there is one subtle difference here though and that's the index retained the same index value so here we have um index two was c here index two was a c when we had the list version though to get the c out uh, when i created a new list this index was switched to zero this one was one so subtle difference right there all right let me just do uh, real quick let's pull out that c so we have sliced letters and that's going to be uh, in index two i get the c now check this out um if i do i location did i get the dot no i didn't i missed it dot i location this is going to go ahead and get the c it, it does it does renumber all of the integer positions so this is now the first element in the series or at element zero so to grab this one i need to use the position zero so when we created the slice it retained the indexes but renumbered the integer positions that's that's what i'm trying to say uh retains indexes those are python keys like from the dictionary but renumbers integer positions those are our list indices let me uh, make that all fit on the screen you know what i never ran that very top cell that adjusts the width there we go so there's my comment so let's go ahead i'm going to go ahead and go ahead and add in just a quick comment copy and paste that from above get some changes made um, of what's really going on when we look at the entire series right here so this is uh integer position zero i've got index two 
the value is Z. So just like that. And then the next item we've got, this is going to be integer position one, because it's going to, this will be zero, this is one. Uh, index three, that's the equivalent of the key with the value D. Oh, and these are capitalized. Let me get that fixed. All right, yeah, that looks good to me now. All right, and one thing that we can't do, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to take this. Oh, here, before we do that, let's, um, quick review. This is going to print out just the S. Whoops, that's not what I wanted. I wanted just this. I want sliced letters. Okay, sliced letters. This is what it looks like. When I use the I location, if we print that out, that was getting uh, the first row, or the first element of the series, which was the value C. If I take out that I and try and just use the location, that's going to try and look in this uh, list here with two and three um, for a zero. And it's not going to be able to find it. This should give us a value error because zero is not in, that's a long error message, not in that two or three. It doesn't have it there. All right, cool. So that's slicing with, um, what did I call it? Uh, we're using integer positions. Uh, we can also slice using the index values. Let me go ahead and grab um, the simple, well, the one we created with the dictionary. Yeah, right here, uh, this one. Go ahead and make a new copy of this. I'm going to put that right up here. Slicing the series using the index. There we go. Okay. Then we'll just print it out just to make sure we got what I think we do. There we go. Okay. So there is a panda series where we've got index values with uh, actual names, uh, w text words. So one of the things we can do now is we can slice this uh, and we'll just give it two and through the end. So what this is going to do is it's going to go through my index values, find the two, and go all the way to the end. All right, I need to move on or I'm going to run out of time and not be able to finish recording this before I need to live stream the video. All right, yeah, I got up early. It's one of those mornings for me. All right, so next up, I want to talk about element-wise operations for a little bit. This is one of the really cool features of Pandas series. So real quick recap um, of how lists work. List review. If I have a list of numbers, and we'll do one, two, three, four. There we go, four numbers. And we'll just uh, run that real quick. There we go, there's my list. If I were to do something like nums times three, that's not going to go ahead and multiply each of these by three, which kind of is like what most people expect. People familiar with vector math would expect that I'm going to have three, six, nine, twelve. That's not what happens. Instead, what it does is it's taking the entire list and then concatenating multiple copies of it. So I have now one really long list with it went from four items to now 12 items. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So this is how lists are going to work. Um, if we have a pandas series, so let's do it this um, series nums equals, we'll do another panda series. And then we'll create a list and we'll just do those same numbers. One, two, three. Oh, three is good enough. All right. And then I need to print this out to show you that it looks like. So we'll just take advantage of Jupyter Notebook. There we go. S nums one, two, three. Now, Pandas is going to do this differently. It's changed the way the multiplication operator works so that it, um, I can take something like my Pandas series, multiply that by three. I typed it wrong, plural. And instead of being one, two, three, now it's taken the three and gone through in each element multiplied by three. So now I have three, six, nine. So pretty straightforward, I think. We can do the same thing with addition. That's number plus three is going to go ahead and say, all right, I started with one, two, three. I'm going to add three to it, four, five, six. And this is probably a good place to note that I never actually reassigned this. S nums did not get changed. Instead, this produced a brand new series and printed that out. But then I didn't save it in a variable, so it's just lost. So this is a brand new series here. So when I went back to snums, it stayed using those values. Those values were retained. And then when I did the uh, plus three, I get a brand new series again. I'm not saving it as anything, so it's just there. Uh, and then I've lost it because I didn't save it as a variable. 
All right, let's just do like a couple more. So if we do S numbers divided by three, there we go, that takes my series divided by three. Uh, I can't do this with the list version. So here's my list, we've got nums. Uh, that's not defined for nums, it's gonna give me an error. I can do the plus three, right? Oh no, that one doesn't work. Oh, list and int, I can't concatenate, just the multiplication, right? Let me just make sure I'm not making mistakes. Yep, so those other functions, the multiplication, the division, they're not defined for Python lists, but um, for the series, for Panda series, they are available. They are defined. Okay, so that was a demonstration of the series operations with scalars. So a scalar is just one number. I'm going to have some sort of operator uh, and then a scalar operand, just a single number, not a list. Here we go. Um, series, operator, in this case addition, scalar is just one value. In this case, when I have a scalar, this gets applied to every single item in the list. All right, the other way we can uh, do element-wise operations, and I'm going to go ahead and copy this and make a new comment where the this piece starts, is series that operate on series, uh, element-wise. So let me just put that comment right there. And first, um, we'll do the yeah, the list review. So if I have uh, list one is equal to one, two, three, and then list two equals four, five, six. I can just go ahead and just uh, do list one plus list two, and this is gonna concatenate the two lists together. All right, if I do something very similar with panda series, we can have uh, series one equals, and uh, whoops, I'm just going to go ahead and copy and paste these same values right here. And then we'll create panda series 2. We'll give it these values right here, the 4, 5, 6, like that. And then we'll go ahead and do S1 plus S2. What this is going to do is it's going to do element-wise operations. So in this case, it's going to take the very first element, the one here, and the very first element of my second series, the 4. And because I'm doing addition, it's going to add those two together. So 1 plus 4 is 5. And then 2 plus 5 gives me 7. And 3 plus 6 is equal to 9. So it's just going to uh, find the corresponding element at the same position and add them together and produce a brand new series, just like this produced a brand new list. But this one only has three values. It didn't just concatenate them together. So check this out. This is also defined for multiplication. So I can do S1 times S2, and this is just gonna do the multiplication, say one times four, let me run this, and two times five, so one times four is four, two times five is 10, three times six is 18. So it's just gonna line up the corresponding elements from the same position and multiply them together, produce a new series with the exact same number of elements where we've done some math. All right, I reserved some cells for you guys so you can try out some other things. You can try division, you can try exponentiation. One thing that I wanna demo before I'm done though is some of the relational operators. So I saved some cells for you guys, but check this one out. Suppose I have S1 less than S2. What is this gonna do? Let me go ahead and just run this. Um, oh, and now I don't have everything on the same screen. All right, here, S1, S2. I'm gonna borrow your cells, guys. So what this is going to do is it's going to say, take the first one, one, is that less than four? It's applying this operator. The result is true. So it's going to put that in a new series. Then it's going to say, okay, now compare the things in the second position or at index one. At index one here, we have the five, two less than five. That's true. So this is actually creating a series uh, with a different data type, uh, Boolean values. It's going to be extremely useful later on. All right. Uh, next up, what if we have two series that don't have the same size? Let me go ahead and grab this block right here where I'm declaring my series. I'm going to go ahead and put those in. And then I'm just going to take one of the values out. So now I have a series with three values and a series with two values. And then if I, if I add those together, I'll just do S1 plus S2. That was the straightforward, simple one. We're going to go through, and it works great for 1 plus 4 is 5. I see there's a subtle difference here. So this is 5.0, 5.0, 5.0, 5.0, 5.0, 5.0, 5.0, 5.0, 5.0, 5.0, 5.0, 5.0, 5.0, 5.0, 5.0, 5.0, 
It's float64 is the type now. When up here, when I did this before, I had int64, and my 5 was not a 5.0. Okay, it also works great for the 2 plus 5. So if there's a corresponding you know, partner, they, it does the operation. Now, when we have 3 plus nothing, um, there's not a, a way that we do plus nothing. So what this is representing, NAN stands for not a number. Um, it just is, it's like the equivalent of none for numbers. It means that, that this number doesn't exist. Uh, and the reason we had to switch this to float64 is because not a number is a member of float64. We can represent that, but we can't um, represent not a number as an integer. And so Pandas is going to try and do everything it can to streamline the data types so that everything is in the same type. And that's why they've switched everything to floats to sort of maintain that. All right. Um, now that that's well, necessary, uh, Pandas can certainly handle different data types in, all in one series. Let me go ahead and just type something in real quick. Um, let's just... Uh, yeah, I don't need to save it. We'll just type it in and we'll print one one shot and a series parentheses we'll give it a list we'll put in a character we'll put in a name we'll give it a boolean we'll put in a one so it's an integer a float then we'll put in how about a list one two three how about uh i wonder do you think a dictionary will work i bet it does we'll stick a dictionary in here too so there's an empty dictionary we'll do a Alice B colon Bob. Yeah, all right, let's give this a try. See what we get. And indeed, it works. So I've got a character, a string, a Boolean, integer, float, a list, and a dictionary all in one series. Check this out. So while before we were getting int64 as the data type, or float64 if it was math, um, or the boolean one was type fool this is just object and that's uh, pandas way of uh, just keeping track that we've got multiple different data types they're just going to use the generic it's a generic word for a data type all right so next up if we did want that behavior like we saw with lists where if i did a list plus another list it just concatenated all the elements and i got a longer list if we do want to merge two series that's not an uncommon operation either we might want to do this at some point so let me think here. Um, I've already got an S1. That's a pandas series right there. I've got an S2. That's the one with the 4 and the 5. If I do S1 plus S2, that's the one where it did uh, element-wise math. Okay. But what I, what I want to do is create one longer series here. So in order to pull that off, I'm going to do S equals. It's a special function in pandas called concat, short for concatenation. It's a function. There we go. I've got the parentheses. And this is going to take um, a list of things we wish to merge together. So in this case, S1 and S2. So I've got the square brackets because it requires a list. Just a quick note right there. And then we'll go ahead, we create this. I'll print it out right there. And now we have the first three elements. Those are from S1. The last two elements are from S2. And uh, everything, all the values are now there. Now check this out. This is fascinating to me. The index values are retained. So when we had, let me just do it right here, S1 had index value 0, 1, 2, and that's where those 0, 1, 2 comes from over there. And S2 has index values 0 and 1, and those are retained. So now I have multiple pieces of data with the same index value. They are going to get different integer positions, so I can differentiate them that way. All right, I need just a little more space. Let me make one more cell. Now check this out. My S has two keys at index zero. So let me go ahead and use the, I'm, I'm sorry, not, uh, not keys, index. So we'll do LOC to make sure we're very clear and I'm getting the index zero. When I do that, it's gone through and extract all of the values that have index zero. And there's more than one in this case, the one and the four. So it's grabbed that one and that one. All right, so far in all of those earlier examples, the ones I just finished doing, we were just lining things up based on their integer position. Things at integer position zero were paired with things at integer position um, zero in the other list. Um, and 
That was also true because the integer positions were the same as the index values uh, because of the way I was creating everything using lists. Now, if I create them with dictionaries, I can make this a little more complicated. Let me just give you a quick example. So I've got, I'm creating a series. I'll be using a dictionary. My keys will be letters and the values will be numbers. B, how about 20? Oh, I forgot the A. So, <laughs> yep, I'm, I'm so used to putting in all the syntax and then go back filling in my letters. I just overlooked one. Um, there we go. I'm creating a dictionary, key A, value 10, key B, value 20. That'll be S1 for this example. Then I'm going to create a second one, series 2, and I'm just going to switch the A and the B. And then, let me see here, we'll just we'll make this 1 and 2. That'll be a little easier. All right, and then print S1, print S2. Let's just make sure they look good. Yeah, so here's S1. Whoops, typo. S1. S2. There we go. Uh, that's not clear. Cause it, all right, all right, all right. I was hoping it would format it and look really good. Forgotten it did that. Okay, so S1 has A with 10 and B with 20. And this one has B with 1 and A with 2. So now if I were to do something like um, S1 plus S2, this is going to do addition, right? But now is it going to take the first row, you know, the integer position and say 10 plus 1? Or is it going to match up the A with the A and give me a new series with A is equal to 12 is the question. Let's uh, reset, go. And it does in fact match up the two A's. So it's going to say A is 10. Find the A in this row, or in, I'm sorry, this series. It's a 2. We get 12. Find the B here. It's a 20. Find the same index in the second series. That's a 1. Add them together. We get 21. So the, the rule here is that pandas will prioritize the index value over the integer position. All right. This is known as index alignment. Uh, can't spell this morning. All right. Index alignment. All right. I saved one more cell so you guys can do your own experiment and just try something out here. Uh, take that cell. Try something. All right. And I'm going to move on. I'm going to talk about how to insert values into a series. Uh, let's just grab this series right here. We'll start us off like that. We'll print it out. I'm going to go ahead and actually print S1. There we go. And A is 10, B is 20. Now, if I want to add another um, piece of data to this, if I have S1, I can just go ahead and index with my new key value. We'll go ahead and add C and just say that's equal to uh, 30. And then we'll go ahead and print S1 again. And now I've got A and B here. That was the first time I did it. That's this first print. And then I've added C, and now I have A, B, and C in the series. So it's just gone ahead and added one more thing. Okay, this next technique is extremely powerful. Suppose I have a series, um, pandas, we'll just make a new one real quick. I'll give it a, a whoops, I meant list. So I've got an empty list here, I'm going to fill it in. We'll go 10, 2, 3, and 15. So I match what Mina's doing. All right, I'm just going to run this. I'll go ahead and print this out because it's Jupyter Notebook. Now the goal here is what if I want to create a list that only contains the numbers, in this case, greater than eight. Um, one of the tools I can use is known as this Boolean indexing. In this case, to make this work, what I'm going to do is create a pandas series. I, go, I went ahead and named it B because it's going to be Boolean. I'll show you in a second. It's going to be a list. And I can go here. I can say, OK, 10 is greater than eight. So I'm going to give this a true. 2 is not greater than 8, so that'll be false. 3 is not greater than 8, false. And 15, of course, is bigger, so we get true. Okay, once I've created this, let me just go ahead, print that out. This is a normal series, just like the ones I've been creating the whole time. There's nothing special, it's just got Boolean values instead of numbers. But one of the cool things I can do with it is that I can use this to extract values from S. So here, S, 
of b. So basically what I'm doing is essentially creating like a slice. I want to slice out the 10 and the 15. I'm going to do that by selecting these with true and false values. So instead of the word slice there, I'm just going to put in a b. This is going to go through and say, okay, the first one, 10, true, keep it. Two, false, dump it. What was the next one? Three, false, dump it. 15, true, keep it. And it's going to keep the 10 and the 15. So an extremely powerful technique. Um, now, I had to type these in by hand, but I, I really don't have to do that. It's, it's far more powerful than that. All I really need to do is go ahead and use the element-wise relational operator. I can actually write um, s greater than 8, because that's what I care about. This will return the same Boolean series I just created right here. True, false, false, true. All in the span of typing three characters, rather than like having to type it all in manually. So again, this is just element-wise. It's going to go through and apply this greater than 8 to each one of these. So is 10 greater than 8? Yes. So it's going to return true. Add that to the new series. Is 2 greater than that? No, it's false. Puts that one in the new series. It's going to go through and do all four values. There's no reason I can't just store this. I can say b is equal to 8 and then print out b like that. I get the same thing. And in fact, so up here, this, this is how I would use it if I'd stored it in b. I don't even need to store it. I can just say s. I need something here for my slice. What I really want is if the individual values in S are greater than 8. This will automatically create that Boolean series for me. It's, it looks a little weird because I've got S in there twice. But when you think about these, work from the inside out. So the first thing I'm doing, S greater than 8, this is uh, creating a Boolean series. The next thing I'm doing is using that Boolean series to extract values from the same data structure I used to make it from S. All right, I feel like my video is going to be a little long, so I'm going to go ahead and just suggest that you guys come up with your own experiments. See if you can take this and extract um, values that are, um, you know, choose something other than greater than 8. You know, something maybe the square of the value is less than 20, for example. Just play around, make up your own example. All right, another really powerful technique that's available to pandas data and a lot of times we'll have data tables that have headers or have like uh, row labels that are text. So we might want to be able to manipulate that somehow. So uh, I want to talk about element-wise string operations. In this case, I'm just going to take um, a series of words. In this case, we got a list. Some of them will be uppercase. Some of them will be lowercase. There need to be actual strings, so we'll cut the quotes in. So apple boy, cat, dog, some are uppercase, some are lowercase. Let's let's talk about turning all of these into uppercase words to start with. All right, uh, let me just see here. So words, go ahead and run this cell. There they are, that's my panda series. Um, they're all strings and it's gonna call those uh, data type object. So wouldn't it be great if I could just do this, words.upper. Um, and have that work. Unfortunately, this doesn't work. Upper is a string function, and it's trying to be called on a pandas series. So those are incompatible. Um, let me go ahead and comment this out and just make a note. Doesn't work. Uh, upper is a string function. I'm going to run that to get rid of the error message. What I can do, though, is I can take the name of my series and I can say it, I'm going to call a string function from, from the string module call upper on every single element. So that's what this is doing. From the string module, call the function upper on every single element. And if I run this, then I find that it goes through and converts all of those strings to uppercase. Next up, let's kind of combine those ideas. So we've just turned something into uppercase, and we just learned about Boolean series. Let's use those together. And okay, let's do get uh, grab all the uppercase words from the series. So first thing we're going to need to do is basically we're going to take words, and what we'd love to do is just um, slice it and just slice out all those uppercase words. To do that, what I really need here is some sort of Boolean series. So I need to go ahead and create a Boolean series where I know 
the um, the words are either yeah I need a true or false where for each word I can test and see like uh, in this case if apple is uppercase is boy uppercase so this needs to be true or false so what I can do here I can go ahead and say words um, and that's going to go through each of the words I need a relational operator to say is it uppercase and then I would love to be able to do words dot upper but that's not how you call this I need to tell it it's from the string module str dot upper so now here's what I'm doing this is a relational operator equals just like less than is I'm going to go through element wise and take each word one at a time and compare this word happens to be uppercase apple with this word if they're both the same that means that the original one was uppercase it'll be true then I'm going to take the next word element wise so this is lowercase boy it's going to compare to the uppercase boy say they're not the same it's going to give me false so let me go ahead and just yeah um we'll just do this one so this is going to create that boolean series true false true false that's awesome i'm going to store this in b and then i'm going to call words given that boolean series and that's going to select out just the words that are uppercase all right in fact now that i've got this working there's absolutely no reason that i can't do this all in one line so here i'm going to be extracting something from words what I'm going to be extracting is a Boolean series where I'm giving the words here. I'm just going to copy my series creation code from right there into the box right there. All right. So now there's a lot going on, but all in one line, I'm extracting Apple and cat. So this is a element wise relational operator that's comparing each element, each word to the uppercase word. And if they're if it's already uppercase, then it'll be true. All right, so all in one line. All right, for my next example, I just tested this and copied and pasted this line. I already had it. Um, here we go. So what I want to do now is take an example where I'm creating a pandas series. This one's from a list of just numbers and extract all of those odd numbers from the list. So we'll run this cell again. Let's see. I need to go ahead and print out the list. You guys can see it. So I've got 10, 19, 11, 30, and 35. I'm just going to return the 19, 11, and 35. What I want to do is take advantage of as many of these built-in automated, you know, Boolean series features as I can. So uh, let's go ahead. We'll take series. Remember to try and figure out if something is odd or even, we would use the modulus function. So we'll do smod2. And that's going to give us uh, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1. Um, okay, so those are numbers. It's not a Boolean series yet. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm just going to keep this so that you guys can see it when you're um, doing your own work. And I'm going to ask, is that series equal to, let's see, odd numbers are equal to 1. So like the that one there, 19, means that that remainder is going to be 1. So I'm going to say, is it equal to 1? Now I have a Boolean series. All right, I'm going to go ahead and just store this in B. B is short for Boolean series. Print it out again. So looking good. Next thing, I'm just going to take S of B. And that it now extracts just those uh, odd numbers from the list. In fact, I've got one more cell right here. I don't even need to store it in a Boolean series. I can go ahead and just put all of this in one line right here. So smod2 is going to do that element-wise computation, return a series. Then I'm going to do element-wise uh, equal, equal to, see if it's equal to 1. This is going to turn into a Boolean series. Yeah, I think I misspoke a second ago. This is going to give me uh, integer 0 or 1. And then I'm going to use this as sort of the uh, advanced slicing, the Boolean slice, to get just the odd numbers. All right, guys, one final example. I want to talk about using the and, or, and not operators. So real quick, uh, remember this series I was just using up here for my odd even numbers. I'm going to go ahead and use the same series. And then I'm going to try and see if I can get out numbers that are less than 12 or greater than 33. So I've got a couple of those, like 35 here, 10 is less than 12. Yeah, it's 10 and 35, right? Okay, so it kind of makes sense that I could do something like Advanced slicing, we'll just say s less than 12 or s greater than 33. The problem is 
that um, the writers of pandas were able to hijack lots of these operators from Python, the addition, subtraction, division, multiplication, and rewrite how they work for pandas. It turns out that or is one of the operators that Python does not let you um, hijack and change to do something different. So what the authors of pandas did is they went ahead and said, okay, we'll just steal a different operator. And instead of or, the pandas version of or is that vertical pipe. It's the above shift uh, backslash character. Um, this almost works. There's a problem here too, in that the vertical pipe means something in Python, and that operator has an extremely high precedence. So what it's trying to do is say 12 pipe s. It's trying to do this middle piece. When what I really want to do is do these uh, evaluations. I want to create a Boolean series here with the relational operator. Use the element wise operation here to create another Boolean series, and then use the OR operator on those Boolean values. So if I put these into parentheses, then it, this is all great. So I did this in a couple steps. So let me make some comments for you guys. Um, OR doesn't work in Pandas. Use the vertical pipe instead. Uh, and use parentheses for precedence. All right, cool. I think that'll do it for or. I just need to mention a couple other things. Um, yeah, I'm out of time. So and is actually going to be the ampersand and not is the tilde in pandas. So um, let me do a real quick example here. So this is grabbing things that are out of the range. Let's go ahead and switch this to the ampersand. And then we'll grab numbers that are bigger than 12 and less than 33. So that'll actually be something there. Uh, and that's going to grab two more numbers from the list. And then let's do one example with not. OK, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and put in the not. Then I'm going to grab everything inside of my brackets here and put that into parentheses. So that should just flip this around. This one gave me the 19 and 30. By taking not, that should flip all of the trues to falses and falses to trues and give me everything that's not in the 19 or 30 list, the, the other half of the list. All right, so that's going to do it for this lecture, guys. I'm going to go do some editing, get this put together, get it rendered, and throw this up on YouTube for you guys. Everybody have a great day. I hope you found this uh, valuable, and enjoy.